Oh yeah! Let us remain standing. I want you to join hands now. Join hands. Now hold on. Hold on. Oh yeah, just hold on and feel the sense of belonging. Feel the sense of uh, not being deserted. Feel the sense of not being abandoned. Here we are standing together. Joining hands so we can join lives. So we can join love. So we can join concern. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. Let me hear you this morning now call out the names of those that you would like for us to have this concerted prayer, this prayer for, for the friends and relatives and others that you may call upon. Hear me, let me hear the names now. Gracious God, yeah. For bringing us together, we are grateful. Oh yeah, come on now. For giving many of us a second chance to rebuild our yes. lives, yes. we are grateful. For freedom from many addictions, we oh, are grateful. Yeah. Yes. For recovery of all kinds of abuse, oh, we are yeah. grateful. For opportunities to grow and to learn and just be alive, uh. we are grateful. Oh Lord, we are concerned for those who suffer heartbreak and the loss of a loved one where they feel a deep emptiness within. For them, hear our prayers. And Lord, for those who are taking care of those who are dying and they've done all they can to comfort, to support, to love and feel drained and exhausted. For them, hear our prayers. Oh, yes. And for those who feel the weight of poverty and injustice and see no way out, for them hear our prayers. Hear us this morning. And for those who seek answers to questions that would give them focus and clarity but have received answers that have been misleading or discouraging, for them hear our prayers. Yes. And for those, Lord, who, who are just tired and worn out from all the pressures and problems of just living for them hear our prayers oh lord we trust that your love and grace is deeper than any of our requests any of our concerns anything that we ask for or dream about so by your grace through your spirit empower us that we are able to do all that we can do to have lives that are whole this we say as we say together, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Right on. Shalom. Shalom. And shalom. Shalom. Yeah. We're going to sing America, America. And you will notice that the words have been changed to a great extent. Janice Merikatani is our translator. Let's sing that. Oh, beautiful
Turn around and embrace your brothers and sisters now. Embrace each other. My sisters, the Glide Ensemble is going to sing now, but before, when they finish, they're going to leave immediately to get on buses to go out to, what's the name of that stadium out there? Three Calm Stadium. Out to Candlestick. Anyway. <laughs> They're going to go out and sing the national anthem today for the opening of the 49ers game. Now, they wanted the best, and we're giving them the best. Right? I want you to know how impressive you look when you're in those robes and you start coming in on that stadium. Beautiful. I know you're going to sing. Don't let those 80,000 people get to you. <laughs> you got 80,000 here also. <laughs> really sing it now, and we will see you out there. The Glide Ensemble.
for those of you who are coming through here for your first time, that's our Angela over there. Just what you say, and I shall do. 
want to do one more. <laughs> See, I'm not going to let you go, <laughs> Ricardo. <laughs> Come back here. Come back here. Get back up. <laughs> we got four minutes. <laughs> Come on, Imogene.
Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. Get the bags and baskets real quick so we can take up the offering. Don't want nobody leaving. Ushers, where are you, ushers? Are you there? All right. Cover every place you can. And those you can't, get in those too. Ron, will you come up now? Ron is one of the ministers who's joined the staff. We work together, and uh, I'm glad that he's here. The ensemble was great, wasn't they? Even though you're going to the 49er game, the Raiders is what needs you. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. Don't ever say that Glad doesn't believe in being born again. We believe in it. We believe in rebirth and recovery and renewal. And it's been expressed this morning in song and in praise. Cecil and Jan and Reedley had been at the Democratic Convention. We welcome them back. I don't know about you, but I only looked for them, Willie Brown, Jesse, and that was it. But I love Hillary. I love Hillary. Hillary is just too much. They, they tell her to be quiet. She says, okay, but health care is still needed for everybody. It takes a family, no, she says, it takes a village to raise a child. She is really tough, and I know Cecil will tell us a, a little bit about the convention, but one of my favorite stories of Hillary, and it's an untrue story, it's an apocrypha story, we call it, but she and uh, Bill, you know, Bill, her husband, the president, <laughs> were uh, traveling to Arkansas, and she runs into an old boyfriend, they warmly embrace, they talk about old times, they just have a great time. Bill afterwards is a little jealous and a little upset. Says, look, I was a Rhodes Scholar. I was uh, 10 years the governor of Arkansas. You know, I'm now president. This man who's a mechanic has not accomplished what I've accomplished. And Hillary said, oh, Bill, don't be upset. If I had married him, he would have been president. <laughs> Hillary is just too tough. Well, our ministry here, we try to be tough, we try to stay on the scene, and we try to be involved in the lives of people. Cecil's been here over 33 years. When he first came, people left. And what did Glide do in Cecil? They reached out to the people around them. And now we feed over a million people a year. Cecil and Glide's vision to reach out to people has kept this church alive and excited and enthusiastic about life, and we're grateful for that. And you've made that possible with your contributions and your giving. And so at this time, we want the ushers to pass out the bags there in the rear as well as in the balcony, and they'll come, come forward. Many of you have pledged. Many of you tithe. Many of you are here for the first time and want to be a part of this program and all the contributions we make to make life possible for people in recovery and renewal and so forth. So please give generously. Just a few announcements because I know everyone wants to run off to the game and so forth. The uh, Poetry for the People begins September 18th. That's a Wednesday. And of course Jan and June will be leading that. That's held every year. Our Bible class continues on Thursday at 6 p.m. To 7.30, we have a great group there, and you're welcome to come. We have Bibles for everyone if you don't happen, happen to have a Bible. On Tuesday, of course, we continue to meet on 
racism and the burnings of the church in the South. We're working there, and it's a good group that's meeting every Tuesday from 6.30 to uh, 8 at Freedom Hall. Then, of course, after services, we want to encourage you to go to Freedom Hall to pick up CDs. Uh, the services here are being uh, uh, televised, <laughs> and you're welcome to uh, get a purchase of that. Also, there's T-shirts and books written by uh, Cecil. I came across your book, I'm Alive, and you uh, addressed, me to, addressed me back in 1980. I looked inside and said, brother, and I appreciated that. I was going through all my old books and came across that, I'm Alive. But downstairs, you'll see No Hiding Place and books by uh, Jan also and by the children. All the proceeds will go to help Glide and its programs. Thank you. It's good to see you this morning. Amen. Thank you, Ron. Now that we have two, four, six, about six or seven, if there's anybody who'd like to join the choir, we invite. <laughs> no, we got the basic stuff here. We got altos here, sopranos here. Yeah. Tenor. We don't have a tenor, do we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tenors. See, we have women tenors here, and men sopranos, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd like to invite you to become a part of this church, and after we finish this morning, if you would go. What is this that's making me sound this way? Am I that heavy? <laughs> What's going on? Well, anyway, would you work on it and see if you could get it? There's something wrong. Dave, you all, whatever's going on here. Does it sound okay to you? Well, what's wrong with me then? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. When we finish, we'd like for you to go to this door and right through that door, first door to your left. Go there and join our family, our community, our church. Last Sunday, we took in 21 members. And I was so proud, so proud. We're now over 400 new members this year. And I would like to have about, no, I'm going to even give you a number. Come on and be a part of it. Thank you. Really would appreciate having you. Remember, wherever you come from, just come on. No matter, just come on. What I want to do now is, uh, if you all will get things up for me here, I'll get ready, because they've taken up the money, and we've got to get out of here close to 12 o'clock. That's what I love about this place. We can shift. There's no set way to do things here, you know. Got a certain ritual you go by. You got to walk a certain way. You got to have things a certain way. We don't certain nothing here. <laughs> I'm going to speak to you very briefly this morning. Because, uh, you know, after I looked at the Republican convention and then had the opportunity to be a delegate to the Democratic convention. I, uh, what is it? It's the action tape with the microphone, that's what it is. Is that what it is? Yep. Where is the microphone? There it is. You all told me about this downstairs and I just kind of forgot it. Uh, after seeing the Republican convention, being a delegate at the Democratic convention, I surmise that it was critical for us to be able to articulate what we're really about here, I think. You look at the social condition, the human condition, the economic conditions, 
the, the conditions of spirituality, the religion, and I've concluded that there is no doubt about it. We really must come to understand that somewhere within the sphere of, of society and of the world, there must always be a group of people who are different, who are on the cutting edge, who are, who are those who feel that status quoism is not enough, those who feel like uh, that they must shift and change and make things happen so the world won't get dull and blah and frozen so through some miracle humanity will rise up and let it be known that what is really needed is people need to know that they can change and they must keep changing because change is never over. Let me put it my way that in this book is deliverance. That's what the Bible is all about from beginning to end. For me, it is about to be delivered, having deliverance come. Deliverance meaning that I must never be where I've been because that continually keeps me from dealing with my humanity, with love and acceptance of all people, that what I must do constantly is find ways by which the word comes to me in sometimes mysterious ways, but the word comes in the eternal now. And out of all of this, somehow I will not remain the same old Cecil Williams. Cecil's got to change. Deliverance must come. And that's what this Bible's about. I need deliverance, and you need deliverance, and the world needs deliverance. Yeah, we went to the convention, and I had made a decision, told Reed and Jan this. I, I said, uh, I'm not going to get in any trouble while I'm here. <laughs> At least for the first day. <laughs> so I went there, and I sat down in that seat. And after about two hours, some change began to happen to me. <laughs> I felt like I was being delivered from all of those speeches and all of that, whatever it is, I, I, it left me after about two hours. But what I'm trying to say, my brothers and my sisters, I sat there, I was sitting, my seat buddies were several people from Vallejo and Richmond. And I mean, they, they know the stuff. So whatever they did, I did it. <laughs> they'd get up and shout, I'd get up and shout. If they'd wave a, 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 a placard, I'd wave one. Mine was upside down several times. <laughs> I mean, they led me on, I, they, and they knew they had me, see. They kept saying to me, now, Reverend, <laughs> just follow us. We follow you, now you follow us. So I did. It was a great experience. Uh, that second day, we went to uh, the center to, to go to the convention. And, and as we were going in, uh, uh, a man from the Chicago Tribune stopped me and said, uh, Reverend, uh, I want to ask you a question uh, about uh, welfare. I said, oh, Lord, I'm ready. What about this bill? And I said to him, it's the worst bill that has come down in a long time in the Congress. I said, but I got to tell you something, even though it's the worst bill, I'm convinced that that was a political statement on the part of those who voted for it. And I want you to know 
that whoever gets elected, and I may be Bill Clinton re-elected, if he's there, that bill will never look like it's looking now. There's no doubt about it. But I want you to know that what that tends to do when you go in that direction, it moves you toward the right or the center or the right. I said, I want you to know that I'm a progressive. I said, if you don't know what that is, I'm a prophet. And I can't accept those kinds of notions and, and, and decisions that move people who have with more than they can have and those who don't have with less than what they can get. And so therefore, as a prophet, I want you to know this nation must change. It must face up to deliverance. It must come into a new place. And as we move into the new century, I'm convinced that the prophets and the people must move together and things will never be what they are now because as we move toward the future, there are those of us who are going to keep on keeping on and will never give up until all people share in this economy. This book is about God chasing humanity. Now, I don't want to go through all these genealogies. This does not move me in this book. The genealogy. Uh, any of all that. You know, how many... Many times they had war and how they were out to clip each other and cut each other up and all this kind of stuff. Lord I must say, this book is about liberation. It is to liberate the minds and the hearts and the souls of humanity. It is to bring people together. That's what this book is about. It's about bringing people together so they can be liberated as a community, as the new community which I'm talking about in my book. And the new community is that people which has said, what we've been will never be the same. We'll never be like what we've been. Because God is delivering us. Golly, God is calling us. Like as he called Moses, God is calling us. And he's using a burning bush like welfare to get us together. And we're going to go. We're going to go. Because we will not accept. We will not accept being less than what we've been called to do. Somebody said, it's not my time. Oh, yes, it is. Somebody said, well, you know, I don't, ha I, I don't have time right now to, to do the God trip. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, yes, you do. <laughs> you may not have time to do the God trip, but God's got time to do the human trip. You see? So you might as well wake up, folks. God's not going to quit until you give up. God doesn't give up on, on, on us. Don't you know that? How do I know? Look, you're looking at the worst that's ever been. And I've moved to a lot better than what I've been, folks. I ain't bragging, but you should have seen me when. And now you see me as I am. You see? God's asking us, uh, can you do it? And we're saying, no, God, we can't. But I want you to know that deliverance goes on and on. Here's what Isaiah says, for my salvation will be forever and my deliverance will never be ended. Never. Never be ended, says Isaiah. Not my salvation, not my deliverance, never be ended. Isaiah is a very uh, shrewd uh, uh, a person, uh, he's one of my favorite prophets, if not my favorite prophet. Because what Isaiah does is he says, I, I want you to know that there are no excuses for making decisions. Like a lot of folks who are always making excuses. I, I, I just can't do it. I don't have time. Or oh, I've been through too much. This is nothing. Listen, I've been through too much and, and I, I can't go through no more right now. Come back next year 
you know, uh, uh, some folks who say, well, I just don't have the, I don't have what it takes right now. The thing that, that, that really grips me is the fact that, that so many of us don't begin to understand that, 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 uh, that it is time for us to begin at some time, and maybe this is the time. What do we need to be delivered from? What does, what do we, all right, here's something. We need to be delivered from words. Word, that's W-R-D-S, words. We need to be delivered from words, you know? We know how to cut each other down. We know how to put each other down. We know how to cut each other up. We know what to call each other. We know what to make sure that, uh, that if I can denigrate you, if I can, if I can just smash you a little bit, then I'm better than you. No, 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 you can talk all you want to. Use any word you want to. I think it's time for us to be delivered in regards to the word. We need new words. Like, for instance, a new word would be, hey, yo. <laughs> yo, come on now. Let's get at it. Come on. Let's get up and do something. Let me put it another way. New words would be, I love you so much until I will not give up on me, nor will I give up on you. <laughs> new words would be, I don't know what you've got, but I'm going to love you in spite of what you've got. I don't know where you're going, but I'm going to be with you no matter where you're going. I'm not afraid. See, one of the most dreadful words that we have is fear. I fear you. I, I can't get up. I can't do this. We, you know, we don't, why is it that we don't like to get up before folks? You know, I can't do that. No, uh, uh I, I can't do that. I ain't going to stand up before that. I can't talk. I, God said, look, just get up there and just start rattling off. <laughs> no, when you get to your place where your comfort zone is, you just rattle off all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, and yeah, blah, 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 blah. just talk, 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 talk. You know, those telephone conversations are absurd. Have you ever talked on the phone longer than There's nobody who ought to talk on the phone more than five minutes. <laughs> Are your people just going over the same thing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We got to watch that. New word. We need new words like integrity. I'm doing my integrity. Oh, let me tell you something now. There's another word that really good. Courage. It's about time for us to have some courage. That's C-O-U-R-A-G-E. I need some courage to face this thing. We very seldom hear somebody, well, I had the courage to keep on going. We need the courage to keep on going. Secondly, we need to be delivered from attitude. You know, really. You know, we need to be delivered. You know, you know people can be so mean. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, leave me alone. I don't got time for you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't even want to be around you. I don't want to even smell you. You choose me, you know. Like somebody said to me at the convention, there's a man over there who's very smelly, and I'm not going to sit beside him. I said, well, wait, brother. Have you checked yourself also? <laughs> now, we can put up with a little smell for a little time. You know, might do us some good. You know, our attitude, we're very mean-spirited, you know. I wish that we had a kind of cemetery where, where when we buried folks, we could put all the mean-spirited folks on one side. But I know that wouldn't work, because all of us would be over on that side, you see. We are so mean we're so mean. You know, the thing that kept, sometimes I hear, hear the kids say, you just nothing but a dog. You know, a, do, a dog, I tell you, man, that's pretty down, I tell you. We must also have deliverance for seeing and hearing. Ways of seeing and hearing each other. We don't really hear each other. We don't see each other. You know, those who got don't have time to listen and really hear 
and see those who don't have. And those who have are trying to move up so hard until that cry gets unheard and they know it and so they give up very easily. But let me, let me just tell you about when Jesus went to the hillside and he began to talk with thousands of people, so the story goes. And he said to them, blessed, blessed, blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. Bless you because you are down now, but you won't be down always. Why? Because I'm with you. That's why. Yours is the kingdom of God. Kingdom meaning power. Yours is the power of God's spirit and God's love and God's concern. Blessed are you for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now because you're going to be filled one of these days. Not just hungry for food, but hungry for food first, but hungry for spirituality, hungry for humanity, hungry for brothers and sisters, hungry for a new community, hungry to be able to walk together, hungry to be able to embrace each other and touch each other and say, I'm yours and you're mine. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. I, I, I never forget, I'm going to curl up and get through here, but I got to tell you this. We were growing up as kids down in Texas, and we often would go over and play the white kids football. And, and, and at nighttime, we'd come home and, and, and we'd sing after we'd eaten supper. You all don't know what that is. Supper means a dinner to you all, but uh, anyway, <laughs> we'd go. Same. So we'd go to eat supper, and after supper, we'd wash the dishes uh, when we could wash them. But then we'd wash the dishes, and, and then we'd uh, go on the gallery. You don't know what a gallery is. It's a porch. Go on the gallery and sing out there, and then we'd begin to tell stories. And our stories were always, I'd love to tell our stories, because it would let our family know that we could laugh. We've been weeping all day because of something we've gone through, but we could laugh at nighttime. We'd start telling about them football stories where we'd throw a pass and one of the black dudes would get to running and run on by the white dude and catch that pass and go for a touchdown. And we'd just laugh. Ha <laughs> ha, Lord! <laughs> See, we've always been good in the 100-yard dash. <laughs> but don't give us no long run because we'll run out of gas, right? <laughs> you hear me? Oh yeah, we will cut out in a minute. <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. Blessed are you then, you when people hate you, when people hate you, Blessed are you. You are blessed. When they exclude you, you are blessed. When they defame you, you're blessed, my brothers and sisters. My God. It's amazing, isn't it? All right, I'm going to tell you this story. Samuel Beckett wrote Waiting for Godot. And he has Godot, or God, open the curtains to the drama. God is already there, but the people who come on the stage keep looking for Godot, for God, and cannot find God because they are not ready to be delivered. They think they're so good at capturing God that they walk right past God. And so they wait. And they wait. Blessed are you 